the evolving objective is contribute to pandemic preparedness and response, or PPR. And there are two fundamental reasons why this is part of the Global Fund strategy. The first one is the impact COVID-19 has had on Global Fund programmes and global health in general. And it's there to ensure the Global Fund is fit for purpose to respond to existing and future pandemics and to ensure the resilience of HIV, TB and malaria programmes. The second reason is a political decision to position the Global Fund as the most efficient mechanism to manage global financial and programmatic responses. So positioning the Global Fund as a key player for pandemic preparedness and response in global health systems. Now it's not clear or easy to define how this evolving objective will benefit sex workers, if at all. The sub-objectives focus on scaling up HIV, TB and malaria investments, improving capacity for detection and rapid response, strengthening disease surveillance systems, strengthening laboratory systems, supply chains and diagnostic capacity. It seems likely there will be a huge increase on attention to strengthening laboratory systems and diagnostic capacity. The two sub-objectives of any relevance to sex workers are leveraging the Global Fund's platform to build solidarity for equitable, gender responsive and human rights based approaches and championing community and civil society leadership and participation in pandemic preparedness and response planning, decision making and oversight. However, there is little actual substance in the strategy and no reference to increased investment in community led responses in either sub objectives. And they are at present just words on paper. So let's now look at the strategy narrative. So what is different about the new strategy? A new strategy does not mean a new organisation. The primary goal of the Global Fund remains focused on ending AIDS, TB and malaria. Although we do need to be vigilant that this focus is not diluted with the increased attention on COVID-19 and emerging pandemics. The basic philosophy of working as a partnership and continued emphasis on outcomes and results also remain the same. The partnership model has not worked well for sex workers because sex workers are most often left out of any partnerships and although the continued focus on saving lives is welcomed, we must continue to advocate for sex workers and other criminalised populations to be included so that the leave no one behind mantra has meaning. Overall, the intention is for Global Fund partnerships, processes, staff and systems at the Secretariat and more importantly at country level to be more responsive to the data, evidence and knowledge that increases engagement of communities and key populations leading to more effective disease responses. There is also a commitment to address the structural barriers such as criminalisation of sex work, human rights violations and individual and institutional stigma and discrimination. The strategy narrative highlights 10 key areas where the global funds say things will be different and some of these are more relevant to sex workers than others. I think it's important to say at this point the strategy narrative is full of fine words and seemingly important commitments but and it's a big but, none of it will mean anything unless the Global Fund is prepared to embrace the changes that are necessary to make the commitments a reality, to reduce disease incidents and improve the lives of those least well served. It is not enough just for the community rights and gender team 
and a few enlightened fund portfolio managers and country teams to embrace these changes. It needs to be across all departments in the global fund. But what we're seeing is pushback and opposition and a desire to continue doing business as usual. This is the context the next part of this video should be viewed. So, with the 10 key areas, there are perhaps six relevant for sex wealth. One, there will be increased focus on prevention across all three diseases. For HIV, this should result in addressing the gaps in HIV prevention coverage, speeding up access to and use of new HIV prevention options, and expanding the range of platforms for access to HIV prevention. Despite the ever-present desire for new HIV prevention options, this also highlights availability and access to condoms, lube, harm reduction services as essential, and also opens up other options such as mobile clinics providing STI testing and treatment, and needle and syringe exchange programs. Second, there will be an increased focus on health system strengthening, which should align with and include community system strengthening. The third one, a more systematic approach to supporting development of community systems strengthening. It is clear that sex worker-led organisations and networks are an integral part of community systems. And this commitment from the Global Fund means CCMs should recognise this and be supported by Global Fund country teams. And this will hopefully lead to increased investment in community-led organisations. Four, a stronger role and voice for communities living with and affected by the diseases. Now, this one includes a commitment to put the most affected communities at the centre of everything we do. The community's delegation and others fought hard for this to be included, but making it a reality would take a lot more work. Although some fund portfolio managers and country teams are already showing an increased willingness to engage directly with sex workers, and the CRG team, the Community Rights and Gender team, are always supportive, there are still many departments and people in the Global Fund Secretariat and also at country level and within UN partners who consider themselves experts and do not recognise or value the expertise, knowledge and skills within the sex worker community. However, this is an important commitment that should be referred to when challenging institutions, systems and people who try to exclude sex workers. Five, intensified action to address inequities, human rights and gender related barriers. Another important commitment. <coughs> Basically, the intention is to continue current activities, scaling up some of the programmes and raising the level of ambition. It's difficult to know if this will mean real change for sex workers, but it should make it easier to get human rights and gender programs included in funding requests. And eight, well, it's, it's um, objective eight, but it's, it's the sixth one here, much greater emphasis on data-driven decision-making. For sex workers, this highlights the importance of ensuring data collection protects the safety and security of criminalized populations and reinforces the need for community-led monitoring. If decisions are being made based on data, it is important that data collected by sex workers is included. So this commitment should be viewed as an opportunity. So these are the areas of relevance to sex workers that the Global Fund say they will change. But the strategy narrative also goes into detail in a number of other areas. There are sections on ending AIDS, ending TB and ending malaria. 
These are pretty general without much useful detail. And then it moves on to what is called mutually reinforcing contributory objectives.